Hello there and welcome to another day of landscape photography. We are living in these crazy times but I've always taken solace in doing or going out and doing landscape photography. It's a great way to take your mind off the pressures and the strains and crisis that may be going on and just let it all out and just relax. Just to let you know, moving forward, I'm gonna be doing a video on a Sunday, which is gonna be this type of thing. And I'm gonna try and do a Wednesday video as much as possible as well. Something a little bit more technical or gear review-y, that sort of thing. But I want to put out as much content as I can for you at the moment. There is also tutorials going on to the Raw Room, where you can get a seven day free trial just by going to firstmanphotography.com slash raw room. Right, don't wanna waste any more time. Let's get on and do some photography. Right, so there we go. I am set up for a shot and the conditions are absolutely fantastic for long exposure photography. Basically what I've got is these really high altitude clouds and they're broken up and they look fantastic. Now importantly, there is barely any wind. For seascape long exposure photography, what that means is that we can put a six stop filter on the front of the camera, which will give us that nice long exposure, serene feeling as it smooths out the water. But because there's no wind and the clouds are barely moving, they'll stay nice and sharp because we're only gonna be exposing for kind of less than 10 seconds. So the way they're so high altitude and not moving very fast, they'll still have all of that detail in there, but then we'll get that water smoothed out and it's just gonna look great. I have also have the circular polarizer on. I have it probably about halfway, so it's taking a little bit of the sheen off the water, but then also pulling some of the detail out of that sky as well. Settings wise, without the filter on at the moment, I am at F16 because I want to get all the detail of these rocks. There's some lovely bits of seaweed and detail and barnacles and things in that rock. And I want to capture all that in as sharp as detail as possible. It's quite close to the camera. So I'm going to F16 to get that big depth of field. I'm then at ISO 100 to keep it nice and clean, nice clean image with low noise. And then I'm at 1 25th of a second. I am in a fairly hairy position here. As you can see, <laughs> got the tide or the sea coming in. The tide is actually going out. So I know I'm pretty safe on these rocks right now. Composition wise, these rocks that I'm stood on, as you can see there, kind of, they curve really nicely back towards the beach. And then I have that cliff and that rock formation, rock formation in the background there, forming the background of my image. I'm not completely happy with this left-hand side. I would like a little bit more water on the left-hand side. I don't particularly want to see the sand and the rocky bits of the edge of the shoreline. So I'm not totally happy with that, but I still think it's gonna work because this leading line is so strong. That's gonna, with smoothing out the water, that's gonna come really, become really prominent in the image. Right, we are pretty much ready to go. So I'm just gonna take the six stop filter out of my pocket, being careful where I'm putting my foot, and then just slide it in if I can, tighten that off a bit. And then I need to just brighten up the exposure. So I'm just gonna roll that shutter speed till I get a similar kind of exposure using, I'm not even calculating it, I probably should do, but I'm just gonna use the histogram and my normal method for looking at exposure. I've done plenty of videos about that before. Right, there we go, that's looking good. Detail right across the image. I'm shooting away from the sun, so it doesn't really matter that I haven't got any gradient filter on. We're exposing there for eight seconds. Don't wanna put this camera in front of the lens, do I? There we go, Ooh, let's come around, have a look. And I'm just gonna zoom in very quickly. Look at oh, the detail on those rocks. Looks beautiful. It's a decent enough composition. I think it will be much better though if I get, come around this way, very much better though if I get a brief break in that cloud. The sun, probably in about 10 minutes, will dip down behind the cliff. So I'll wait here for about 10 minutes, see if I get a nice bit of light on these rocks because that will really make this image work. But as a first image of the day, <laughs> that's not too bad. And stood here right now, the world and I are at peace. And it's, yeah, plenty of solace in this position right now. 
the noise of a gentle sea, a gentle seaside breeze, fresh air. I'm feeling pretty good, very positive, and that image I am pretty happy with. Right, so I'm set up for my next shot now and I've literally, I'm stood in exactly the same spot as I was before, but I've just kind of spun 90 degrees to the right essentially because there's this other rock formation up in the distance there that you can see. And when I was filming some B-roll for that last shot, I noticed these rocks down in the foreground here and they, they've got a fantastic shape and some of that same sort of texture and barnacles and seashells and cockles and all seaweed in between them and it just looks great but then I noticed as the sea is washing over them as the white foam fills in the gaps between those rocks it looks absolutely fantastic now the problem I'm having at the moment is that I need a good wave that's gonna wash over and it's getting less likely all the time so I'm keeping an eye on it because I'm ready to go I'm at f11 I've got a five second exposure. Got a good wave coming now, this could be it. Let's just shoot anyway, see what happens. Nah, it's not coming quite close enough. But the composition is essentially getting the horizon pretty much above the rule of thirds. So I'm pointing down quite a lot at these rocks. Filling my foreground at, yeah, I'm at 16 millimeters. Nice and wide to fill my foreground with these rocks. And the, the lines, that that white foam is going to make in between the rocks is going to what is what is going to make this image work i've then got just those fantastic clouds i mean look at them absolutely beautiful now same sort of deal as before looking to smooth out that water keep some of the sharpness in those fantastic clouds i've got a little bit of that cliff in the right hand side of the frame as well i could do with a little bit of sun i've probably got about two three minutes of sun sun left before it goes behind that cliff behind me there. So I really want this. I much prefer it to the previous image if I can get that water washing over these rocks. It's not gonna be anywhere near as good without that. And the more, the closer it can get to my feet, the better it's going to be. It's frustrating because up until the point I had my camera composed, I was getting regular waves coming up here, but the tide is going out. So like I said, it's less likely that's gonna happen all the time. I just need that one, one swell. <laughs> to make it happen. There's a couple coming now. Here comes one. It's got a bit more force behind it, I think. It may, may be onto something here, a bit more speed. And there's a much bigger one following now. Look at this one here. This is it. Right, let's go. Don't wanna to go too soon. <laughs> go two second timer, five seconds. Still not quite there, still not quite there, but I'm having fun anyway, so I don't really mind. I'll get one in a minute. <laughs> set up now for what will probably be my last shot of the day and it's just fantastic conditions here the wind has died off almost completely those clouds are still hanging around there's also now some beautiful color developing that when we're about 10 15 minutes before sunset there's also still some of that sunlight casting out onto the sea and giving it that little shimmer which just looks beautiful. And one of the things I love about long exposure photography, particularly for seascapes when you're at the coast, is the ethereal feel that it creates. It's that calming effect, which is I'm looking for today. Now, one way 
to get those really calming, beautiful images is just to keep it simple, particularly by attending the beach as the tide is going out like it is now. Because when the tide goes out, it, the water washes back down the beach and puts all these interesting lines into the sand. So you can use that, but for this one, I'm just wanting to use a few of the bigger pebbles, but probably just the sea as it's coming in. Now, I'm using a long exposure. I'm going for six stop filter again. I'm looking for an exposure around four or five seconds. So as the tide comes in, it washes up and it always looks better, I think, as it then flows back into the sea because it starts to thin out and you get some of those veins of water moving back in to the sea and it, they produce both leading lines, shows a little bit of movement and interest in your foreground and just as well has that calming ethereal effect that I'm looking for. So straightforward, so simple. Is it unique? It is to some extent because the water has never done that before. Water is in its very nature unique, but who cares? I'm not looking for that right now. I just want to make a nice, simple image here at the end of the day. So let's talk about settings for a minute. The six stop filter is already dropped in because I can just compose my image through that quite nicely. I'm at F8, so everything's gonna be nice and sharp. Four seconds at the moment with the current conditions. I just want to wait for a wave to wash up to the bottom of my frame there. I will then use a two second timer and capture that water as it goes back out. And I think I've got a nice wave coming in now. Here we go. Two second timer as it's starting to wash back down. Oh, let's have a look at that again. I'm sinking into the sand as is a tripod, but it doesn't matter with a four second exposure. That's not gonna show up. That just looks beautiful. I may crop it down to an eight by 10 or a square crop. There's color in the sky. There's beautiful movement and leading lines in that water. Ah, what a fantastic image to finish the day. I'm really happy with that. And ah, this has been medicine today. This is healing me. It really is. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna to continue to be tough, but I wanna share everything with you. I wanna share these adventures with you. I hope it will inspire you to go out and uh, create some landscape photography as well. Please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and I will be with you every step of the way. Love to you all, take care of yourselves, be responsible, do the right thing, and I will see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography on the North Yorkshire coast, out.